Well, flight test crew here. We're taking our first quick look at the NASA GPS today. We're going to start by going back to the workshop, unboxing and installing it. Then we're going to come back here and see how she flies. Sound good? Yep. Let's do it. I want to find out what's inside, do you? Let's see what we have here. So, ah, there's the GPS itself. Looks pretty self-explanatory. One wire. And there's something else in here. Ah, it is the little uh, stick so you can mount it away from electronics. Open these up. Okay, we got some stickers. I don't know what those are for yet, but I'm sure they're important. This little guy assembles like so. Typically when I glue that, that raises it out of the way. So it's not near any electronics, ESCs, receivers, transmitters, such. And here is the GPS itself. Pretty basic. Plenty of room, so if you're mounted across the copter, that'd be nice. This just plugs into the NASA, and that's it. So what we're going to do here is upgrade Raven with a Naja GPS and see how it works. Okay, we're going to mount the GPS. Now with Raven here, we couldn't quite figure out where to put this. Figured it was kind of going to be irrelevant because we're going to try putting everything inside of our waterproof dome, which is also microwave safe. We already had a GPS mounted, so we know GPS can work. We're going to give this a try and see what happens by mounting it on a small piece of wood, which of course is non-ferrous and paying special attention to the orientation since there's a compass in there. The little arrow has to point forward on the craft, so I'm just using, kind of eyeballing it here to get it as straight as possible using this thing as orientation for myself. It's nice and tight with the Velcro. It's actually a very nice Velcro. And just check and see if the dome fits. And it does. Now the nozzle is buried deep inside of here, so I've got another nozzle here to show you where this plugs in. It goes into EXP. Uh, little tabs go down, jacks in, good to go. If you've got software 1.6 or better, it'll recognize it and work. The first thing you have to do before you fly the new GPS module is calibrate it. Also, if you make a change to the craft, calibrate it again. So before we calibrate, we have to make sure to remove our cell phones, our keys, anything metallic on your person that could affect the compass in the system. Anything metal in the environment, like uh, cars, poles, uh, fences, make sure that you're away from them, because those can mess up the magnetometer. To start the calibration process, Lucidity will flip the control mode switch 6 to 10 times between GPS and manual while I'm holding the craft. When it's ready to begin the calibration process, the LED in the virtual unit will turn yellow. Now, you turn around in a circle. You'll notice the light will turn green. It will stay green until you're done. Rotate the craft 90 degrees after the first turn and turn on a circle again. If successful, the light will extinguish. If not successful, it'll blink red. The LED on the versatile unit will blink to indicate the status of the NASA GPS. A steady green blinking indicates the GPS module is active and has achieved a satellite position fix. Alternating red and green blinking means that the GPS module is active but it hasn't acquired enough satellites to accurately determine its position. A steady yellow blinking indicates that the NASA is in attitude mode and the GPS module is not active. A rapid yellow blinking means that the NASA is in fail-safe mode. Well, if you're flying when you see this indication, don't worry, you won't be for long. To demonstrate the effectiveness of GPS position hold, we took Raven out to the park on a windy day. As you can see, the NASA GPS module is doing a good job holding its position, even up against a pretty stiff wind. Now, watch what happens when Tekkenstein disables GPS position hold. Raven is immediately carried away by the wind. Finally, we took a minute to test out one of the new Intelligent Orientation Control Modes. This one basically decouples Pitch and Roll on your right stick from Yaw on your left stick. 
That means, no matter which direction your bird is pointing, it always responds as if it's facing away from you. I'm not sure what the practical application of this mode is, apart from pretending you're an expert multi-rotor acrobatic pilot, without having to put in the thousands of hours it takes to actually get that good. Okay, so that was our quick initial look at the NASA GPS module. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. All right. Fly safe. Roswell Flight Test Crew here. We're going to take our first quick look at the NASA today. Really? Deep, deep, yes, we are. Yes, awesome. <laughs> yes, we are. I thought we already did that one. We... All right, you suck. <laughs> you're, not, you're not worthy of this. I can't. I can't! I can't <laughs> perform like this! I'll be in my dresser. You're scary, scary people now. Okay, so that was our quick initial look at the NASA... Ah! Ready? Alright. So that was our quick... Ready? I wasn't planning on doing outtakes for this video, but that, that judgment may have been premature. I see. You got plenty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Roswell Flight Test Crew here.